Let's make this thing. So this gate's made out of ash, and I got it dimensionally cut to width, uh, because there was really no benefit for me to get it rough stock, and I don't have a jointer at this time, so dimension is what it was, and I used the miter saw with a fine tooth blade to cut everything to length. Here on the right you can see the top and bottom rails, the seven slats in the middle, hanger pieces, and the support braces on the left. Now I'm using Matthias Wandel's Big Print program to mark out the round profile for the slats. To save some weight and make the slats more appealing to look at, I took about a quarter inch off of each side using the table saw, and this leaves a one inch width for the slats. Over on the bandsaw, I finished cutting where the table saw blade could not reach, and then I cut the round profiles on the tops of the slats. One of the slats needs a half, half inch hole on one end, and this is for the rotational dowel and then all of the rest of the holes on all seven slides are a three inch hole all the way through. And using my one-to-one -one templates again, I'm marking out the rounded profiles for the top and bottom rails, and also the slot that has to be cut out of the bottom rail to allow the parallelogram effect. On the top rails only, there is a half inch through hole, and this is for the rotational dowel again, and then evenly spaced, which I did using the Big Print program, I forgot that spacing, there is a 3 8 hole that only goes about halfway through the top and bottom rail, and this is for the other six slats. Using my belt sander jig to sand all of the round profiles down, and this gives me a nice square but round edge, and it worked out very, very well. And making myself a 3H dowel out of some of the leftover scrap ash. Over on the router table, I'm cutting out the slot that allows the parallelogram effect using a half inch straight blade rounding over all of the edges just to give it a softer look. Mounting the two latch pieces for the locking side of the door. Dry fitting the gate so that I can drill and countersink the holes on the top and bottom rails before I finish the gate. on a coat of stain while listening to Making It podcast, and for the finish, we use red mahogany minwax stain. I then put on a coat of Danish oil to protect the wood from the inside. On top of the coat of Danish oil, I wanted to use two coats of white bond polyurethane. I made my own white bond using 50% polyurethane and 50% mineral spirits. After everything was good and dry, I used some Johnson's Pace Wax to make the rotation joints a little bit more slippery so it wouldn't squeak and it rotates much easier. Now you may notice that there's only screws used in the assembly of this gate, and that's so that I can easily take it apart and wax and possibly refinish if I ever need to. And the 
crossbar that goes from the slot at the bottom to the rotational dowel on the top. This is what holds the gate up if you let go of it when it's not on the latch, and this allows it to swing in place. The hinge and latch mounts are screwed directly into the wall and into the newel post of the banister. And these are not glued, so you can take them out and remove the gate if you want to. Well, it is super awesome to finally have a real baby gate on the bottom of the stairs. We were using one of those cheap plastic baby gates and it was chipping out the side of the stairs every time we kept putting the gate up and down. So this is much easier to just latch, go upstairs and, and come down and you don't have to hop over the gate or anything like that. So safer for us and uh, we'll probably close the gate more often which will keep Ethan from climbing up the stairs. Now this gate itself is Matthias Wandel's idea. He built a parallelogram baby gate so definitely go check out his site if you guys haven't already. I'll put a link in the description below. And this locking mechanism was my idea and we used it on the gate on the top of the stairs for about a year now and it works out fantastic. And what this allows you to do is obviously sw swing the gate once you let go of it and actuate up and latch on top of a latch instead of just latching into a latch. And that spreads the weight to either side if the kids stand on the gate. And like I said, it's worked very well for the past year on the top of the stairs. So anyway, if you guys like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. It's always appreciated. Please subscribe so you can see everything we're going to do. I'm Tyler. I like to do it myself. And we will see you guys next time.